Greetings everyone and welcome in today's webinar on the influence of Deming's 14 points to ISO 9001-2015. It is a great pleasure to have you all here with us. I am Sean Mehmeti, the Portfolio Marketing Manager for Quality Management System here at PCB. This webinar will be presented by Mahadevan Hari Haran. Mahadevan is a quality professional with over 40 years of experience in the area of the total quality management, business excellence, manufacturing excellence, and change management program. He is also a PCB certified lead auditor and trainer. Please feel free to write your questions and comments in the question box in the right hand control panel, or you can use the raise hand function to have a chance to ask the question directly to Mahadevan. Left questions will be answered accordingly at the end of the presentation. Please, Mahadevan, you may continue with the presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, good day to all of you. This, my name is Hari Haran, as already introduced. Let me uh, uh, in, thank PCB for giving me this opportunity to talk in the webinar. And I would like to start the webinar by a tribute to Dr. Deming, the famous quality guru. Uh, if you see the ISO 9000 improvements right from the 80s, 90s and 2000, slowly they have been improving based on the philosophy of total quality management and today with ISO 9001-2015 version, we are very close to all the philosophies stated or initiated by Dr. Deming. He has been a very profound, uh, what do you call, say, uh, supporter of the movement uh, where he says the management has to show leadership. Born in the year 1900 on 14th of October, uh, he met Dr. Shevard who was instrumental in the PDCA concept. Today, we have our cornerstone of ISO 9000 is based on the PDCA concepts. And uh, Dr. Deming that met Dr. Walter Shivert in that year. In 1927, he received the PhD degree in physics. He became the head of the mathematics in 1939. Thereafter, during the World War II, he worked with Shivert for the improvement of quality of production or weapons using statistical methods. In 46, he became the statistics professor in New York University. The World War took place and Japan was in shambles. That was the time General MacArthur invited him to come and uh, as part of the economic and scientific to rebuild Japan. He returned back but again in 1950 he came back to Japan. Uh, on the invitation of the Japanese Union of Scientists and Mathematicians to teach methods of achievement on quality. After that, there was no looking back for Japan. Today what Japan is it's a, and what it was in 1950 is a CCC change. Today everybody wants to have a Toyota. Everybody wants a product, whether it's a Sony, and everything has been, you could say, points to Dr. Deming's philosophy, which the Japanese adopted uh, fully. So thus began a lectures in 1951 to all top managers in Japan. In 74, he met William Conway, another great quality guru. And in 1980, what could not be done in US the NBC show said, if Japan can, why can't we? And it was aired to 14 million people. And it became the most requested video of all time. Uh, his famous 14 philosophy, and it's relevant to ISO 9015, would be the topic that I would be dealing with today. Uh, I would be touching, I'm from the manufacturing background, and uh, looking at certain philosophies getting transferred to the shop flow by the Japanese. So I'll be touching upon some of the uh, deployment of the shop flow 
for some of his philosophies. I may not do it too much to the other areas like service, but some manufacturing examples only I would be giving. Uh, the philosophy as depicted by Deming, which are 14, is on the left side, and ISO 9000 2015 principle are the seven principles which we are having in 2015 version. I have put it on the right side. I am not going in detail in this slide, I am just giving you a linkage. Dr. Deming said you have to create a constancy of purpose. For everything that you do, you should have a mission, you should have a purpose. And today we have customer focus as the main uh, principle in 2015 version. Around the new philosophy, what he really means by the new philosophy is a process approach. And that has been built in fully in this, uh, in this, uh, in this approach. Uh, earlier we used to have it not as a business approach. Today we have come up to a very great uh, distance where business processes have, been, have to be mapped in this version. Cease dependence on mass inspection is what he said. And today we have process approach and evidence-based decision making which supports this philosophy. End the practice of forwarding business on price tag. That means don't go for cheapness only. Uh, and then if we are in the new system of uh, 2015, we have the relationship management philosophy. Improve constantly forever production and service, product and service, we have the improvement clause or improvement approach philosophy here in 2015. Institute training, engagement of people. Institute leadership, leadership gets a full term clause in 2015 approach. Drive out fear, process approach, we'll deal with it little in detail later. Break down barriers, again process approach. Eliminate slogans, process approach. Eliminate numerical quotas, process approach. Remove barriers to pride in workmanship, engagement of people. Institute a program of education and training, engagement of people. Take action to accomplish transformation. This is the last one, the leadership and process approach. So let's go through this one by one, try to understand how this great person who had initially taught everything to Japan and it became the way of life for Japanese industry, slowly has now come into a system approach and uh, it's become, a, slowly it's becoming a culture. What was just an action, it's slowly becoming a, a culture. For those companies which are already into the TQM, it becomes very easy. If they are already adopting the Deming's philosophy, it becomes very easy to integrate or migrate to this new standard. Philosophy one, he says constancy of purpose. Again, constancy of one is, that he is talking of innovation research in education, a continuous improvement of uh, product and service. Innovation means what materials required with the type of production because it's ever-changing. Every day it's an ever-changing world with competition is on our neck. So we may have to or we will have to change the way we work. It's a dynamic situation. So he says the materials required, the production methods, the people, what new people, what changes in the equipment, what new skills, all these needs to be very clear and therefore he says it's a continuous improvement of product and service can be done only if we have very clear goals for the organization and it is communicated to all employees. In this case he also says there should be a totally unshakable commitment to quality. He's talking of preparing for the future. No innovation without research no research without properly educating the employee and there should be continuous improvement of product and service. Now let's look at the in the 15 version, 2015 version. If you look at the leadership, 
The management is to demonstrate the leadership commitment by taking accountability of the effectiveness, ensuring that the quality policy, quality objectives are established for QMS. There should be total integration into the business processes and promote the risk-based thinking. Now, if you look into the Deming philosophy where he talks there should be a mission, leadership brings the mission here. Uh, by bringing a process approach and a risk-based thinking. The continuing improvement is part of the point number one philosophy. Here also he says, which it takes off in our 10.3 continuing improvement, we shall continuously imp continually improve the suitability and equacy of fitness. If you look at this, at the Japanese shop floor and many shop floors all across the world, the tools that used for continuing improvement are many. To cite a few, the Kaizen projects, the 5S projects, the waste elimination projects. These are some of the few things which can go up to the grassroots level. The leaders bring this uh, for a greater involvement. When we say people engagement, today people are engaged or brought together by this continuing improvement through these tools. The main aim of or a long-term interest for in Deming is again a customer. Without a customer, you don't exist. So we have 9.1.2 customer satisfaction. Say shall monitor customer perceptions. And monitoring means it can include surveys. It could use customer feedback of uh, uh, on delivery product services, meeting with customers, market share, compliments warranty claims and dealer reports. So if you look at the, uh, the traditional management and the Deming management, you would see that there is, a, uh, there is a, uh, definitely a uh, linkage. Earlier, end result only. Today, it's a process leading to result. Earlier, it was do your best individually, now as a team. In the competitive strategy, it's breakthrough and innovation, whereas now you have continuous improvement, breakthrough and innovation. So in this dimming philosophy is what is now built in the 2015. If you see here, all of them, whatever is mentioned, is being built into our 2015 clause. Point number two talks of but of the new philosophy. What is this new philosophy? What does he mean? What does he mean by the new philosophy? He says everybody should win, which means there should be a transformation of the management. How can everybody be empowered to feel a sense of ownership and share in the company's success? After all, everybody should feel it is his process and there should be ownership. You can't just put a uh, a name to a person saying that you are owning it. The leadership is the one that would make them empowered. That is what he meant in Deming's philosophy. He says defects are not free. We can't afford to live with mistakes, defects, poor workmanship, bad materials and handling damage. So there has to be a, a transformation of the management and our clause number 4.4 .4 talks of Determination of the resource required for ensuring availability, assignment of responsibility to authority. When you say there will be accountability, there has to be responsibility and authority at all levels for the processes. We are not just talking of just person. The process should be under control. So there has to be a very clear uh, assignment of responsibility to authorities so that the person understands his role very well. Also, the risks and opportunities should be identified. When we say risks and opportunities, here in 2015 version, if it is properly implemented, it is from the right from the top to the bottom most person. Everybody, 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 A to Z, at all levels, will identify what are the risks and opportunities in there and plan their actions and evaluate those processes and implement change needed to ensure that these processes achieve their intended results. 
So improve the processes. So where you now you see that the we have deployed Deming's second philosophy, whereby we are able to uh, bring it down to the lowest level. We come to the third philosophy. He says design quality in, which means you have to cease dependence on mass inspection. We are not on mass inspection. Inspection with the aim of finding the bad ones and throwing them out is too late, ineffective and costly. It's not possible in today's, in today's manufacturing or any other thing, when it is a mass manufacturing, you cannot count uh, individual units. It's uh, too costly. You have to go in for the, you have to see your processes are stable, your processes are capable. And therefore, quality comes from the inspection, not from the inspection, but from the improvement of the process. So he says, build good quality in by your design, by all means of design. How shall we do it? You can have, in our system, we have what we call the context of the organization 4.1. So first you identify all your internal, external issues also legal, technological, competitive, market, cultural, social. Strategic direction that affects the ability is also identified. And then understand the internal context that can be facilitated by considering issues. Understanding the needs and expectation of interested parties. So it's interested parties a whole lot of things, whole lot of things. It is never been in earlier standards. Here we bring in all those who are connected with the business process, with the company. And therefore, nothing is left out. The interested parties that are relevant to the QMS, the requirements of these interested parties and monitor and review the info about the interested parties with the relevant requirement. Under operation also, you will find some of the deployment of the Deming's philosophy where you will see that the organization should plan control processes for determining the requirement of the products, establishing criteria of process, determining the resources required and implementing control of the processes in accordance with the criteria. Deming has been a statistical man, you know. He, he said that statistics should be used in without, without using the word statistics statistical control, which was earlier in standards, now ISO 9000 2015 brings a whole lot of higher order terminologies where you say that you have to have established the criteria of process and acceptance. You cannot, but you cannot escape going into higher order methods of measurement and uh, uh, such as statistical methods. Uh, the more you, higher you want to improve, the more of these technical tools or these tools, statistical tools you need to use for bringing into stable operation. He just says there should be capable processes are to be stable and capable. And therefore, these are terminologies which in ISO 9000 2015 use as control, operation planning control, when your word control takes care of all those aspects. In the design development of product and services, what we said the design good quality in, we find that we have the whole gamut of design development planning, you know, at all stages. So design development planning means all stages control of DND, the nature, duration, complexity, the process stages, and the applicable DND reviews, verification, validation responsibility, authority, all these things uh, are part of those uh, principle which goes, which says that design quality into the, into the system. Point four talks of the end, the practice of awarding business of price tag alone. That means in the earlier method we have proliferation of suppliers. You had many suppliers and you're playing one against the another. Variation causes problems in production and impairs quality. It causes buyers to jump from supplier to supplier 
and price has no meaning without a measure of the quality being purchased. So if low cost guarantees low quality anywhere in the supply chain, then the final product though it may be cheap will also be low. So here we are saying that you just, you will have to bring, get from when the process are stable at the supplier end. So you will have to build a long term beneficial relationship. So if you have to have a long term beneficial supplier, you need to have only few of them so, so that you can evaluate their processes, whether they have stable processes so that the product produced by them would be acceptable to your conditions. And as you improve your manufacturing capability, whether it is the machines or your own inputs, your suppliers also will have to go on changing. And as a long term, when you say don't buy on price tag alone, if the person is dependent on you and he is doing it only for you, there would be a definitely a stability in the price alone, price also. So, and a, this is a win-win situation. This is what he says and today's, uh, today's companies are also moving in this direction. So, in the scope of the QMS, uh, we have what you call the external issues. Uh, the product and services organization shall be as per the standard within the determined scope and we should document. Uh, what really I wanted to bring it to you is that all those people involved in supplying to us should also be there, there uh, uh, should be considered you know as part of that if they have an issue we should consider them while uh, factoring this item. Item 5 states improve constantly. There is continuous improvement. He says improve constantly and forever the system of production and service. What was yesterday is history. Tomorrow, today and tomorrow is relevant and we need to improve. So improvement is not a one-time effort. Must be built in the design stage. Putting out fires is not improvement and finding the special cause and removing it is the is only putting the process back in where it was in the first place. So you could see that you could see that uh, uh, continuous improvement is an ongoing process. That means at all levels, whether it's a janitor, whether it is a shop floor employee, crane driver, let's it's a, a supervisor, a manager, or anybody. Everybody should be involved in the continuous improvement activity every single day. This is what he professed. And we have today a continual improvement clause. If really we want to adopt that in what Dr. Deming said, then we need to look at our QMS from that side. More and more we need to integrate with uh, which tools which can be brought to the shop floor. For example, a waste elimination, elimination project. Today, you could have ongoing waste elimination project involving the shop floor employees and uh, the non-value added items or activities could be reduced. Uh, it's an ongoing activity. I will just give a sample for you. Uh, the sixth philosophy which he said was Training for skills. If all employees are learning and growing every day, competition will be only a figment of our imagination. That means with the change in the process, change in the market condition, change in the customer requirement, change, change in the expectation requirement, we are, we are continuously changing our, and employees are learning. So we have to, so Dr. Deming said institute training and retraining. Because many of the places the training, very little training is given or no, no training and the workers don't know, the members don't know when they have done their job correctly. So all employees will have to have training in the significance of variation and uh, taught rudimentary knowledge of control charts. This is what he really meant. Today we have built in into the ISO as uh, a separate new clause called organization knowledge. 
organization shall determine the knowledge necessary. When you said necessary, it is the you put the whole responsibility on the organization, operation of its processes to achieve conformity to product and services. And knowledge should be maintained and made available. And they also talk of changing needs and trends. So you see, everything is covered. What Dr. Deming said today, it has come a reality after uh, almost 60, 70 years, it has come into the new clause, into the new system of ISO 9000 2015, including the intellectual property gain from experience learned. Uh, before going to the next slide, I thought this was very interesting to me, so I just wanted to bring it to you, saying that if you have to do institute of training, retraining, one of the things which my organization did was bring in the proliferation of one point lesson. This is part of the TPM, but it can be done by everybody very, very simple. It's a five to ten minutes uh, discussion on a topic, one sheet. Uh, it must be written as simple. The point uh, or a topic can be a function of the equipment, maybe a jig, cleaning method, type of lubrication, or the method of inspection. Usually it is prepared by the supervisor or sometimes by the operator. They all get together at the shop floor, maybe 10, 15. And in five minutes, the person who has done it, who has, it could be an illustration also, he explains this one point lesson. After everybody has seen this, they sign it and it's put on the shop floor and kept there for a week till everybody in the shifts also go through it. If the problem recurs, it is brought back. It is one of the TPM aspects which can be done as part of training and retraining on all defects, problems that we face. A defect is something which the you also don't like it and you get a shock and the customer won't like it. So if you have a problem, you can discuss on the top 10 problems of your shop floor. Take up OPL for each of these items and start and drive away the all the defects from the shop floor. Institute of Leadership, I think one of the most important clauses of ISO 9000 2015 is leadership very strongly Dr. Deming propagated, saying that leaders select the music, set the tone, and ensure that everyone is on board at every moment. What he really means is that there, it's a job of the management. Leadership is a job of the management. It's a responsibility of management to discover the barriers that prevent workers taking pride in what they do. The job of the manager is to lead, to help people do the job better. So, in ISO 9000 2015, we have this leadership which says that management to demonstrate leadership and commitment. These things are loaded statement, leadership and commitment. How? By taking accountability for the effectiveness. The word effectiveness is coming here. And ensure the quality policy, quality objectives are established. Ensure the integration QMS into business processes. So, this time it has come very loud and clear that ISO 9000 2015 is for business processes and promote the use of process approach and risk based thinking. Risk based thinking is also a very 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 important one for the leadership because uh, continuous improvement will take place only if you proactively think what could go wrong, whether it's an FMEA or you're doing what-if exercises where, where you do it in TPM, uh, you find out in what methods process can go wrong and start building your process suitable to the customer so that you don't, you don't, your process will be at the lowest cost and the customer gets the good product at the right time, at the right, the right delivery. Uh, the process, uh, the philosophy number eight is drive out fear. Now, what he really meant is that if something goes wrong, people would hide normally because they are afraid that if something goes wrong, they will be 
removed from the job or they would be taken to task. So most people in our job do not understand what the job and what is the right or wrong. It's not clear how to find out. So they are afraid to ask a question. Now making it transparent by the seven philosophies in ISO 9000 2015 like customer focus, leadership, engagement of people, process approach, improvement, uh, evidence-based decision making and uh, relationship management. The process have been built. All the process have been built. So once the process have been built with process uh, uh, with uh, responsibilities and authorities, people don't have fear because they can definitely come out and say what is going wrong in their process and start acting on it. So ISO 9000-2015 has moved towards this very closer to this approach of drive out fear. Clause number, the approach number nine or the philosophy number nine is break down barriers. There are no departments. If you start, we started in 87, we had all departmental processes. Today we are having no departmental processes. It is a business process. It cuts across all the entire group of people and make them as full chain. So if the chain is to be made strong, then there's a lot of open communication between suppliers, customers and all employees. If you want to run a JIT system, then the suppliers will have to be arrived at the right time and so that you know less money and storage space are also not tied up with the inventory. So teamwork is the key thing. So to this extent, communication is very important and ISO 9000-2015 talks of communication where it says you should determine the internal external communication relevant to QMS on what you will communicate, when to communicate, with whom to communicate, how to communicate and who communicates. So it's very clear. At, uh, all, at all levels, this communication process is built in through this clause number 7.4. Clause number, the philosophy number 10 says eliminate slogans exhaustion. The management has to provide the means to the end. By building in processes in ISO 9000-2015, the value is placed on doing and demonstrating. We are measuring it. Many people do day-to-day -day management also. So once you are doing uh, as a process measurement and starting to measure the values, uh, slogans are not there. It is just by actions. Eleven is eliminate numerical quota and also uh, identifying the method. So the method is balancing technology with people needs and aspiration and eliminating those non-value added waste. So we look at the uh, waste, what all things is to be removed and start eliminating those waste. Uh, this is one of those methodologies which some companies follow at the shop floor level. Uh, this is part of 5S. If you are to do Seri, Seton, Seso, Siketsu, Sirsuke, that is the 5S of Japanese method uh, of 5S, you will have to remove all these abnormalities from the shop flow. Means minor flaws, unfulfilled basic condition, means those which are not fulfilling the what as per design, inaccessible places, contamination source, quality defect sources, unnecessary items, unsafe areas, unsafe practices. So if you can involve all the employees in identifying your abnormalities, your shop flow will look, your shop flow will improve. There will be no flaws. There will be no chance of making mistakes. This is a, uh, uh, at the shop floor level, you have to involve all employees, whether they are, they are uh, educated or uneducated, everybody gets involved and they drive away these abnormalities. You should reach a level when there is zero abnormalities on the shop floor or on, in the office. 
You could also attack the 12 type of waste and 16 type of machine losses, which is part of the in the in the TPM concept. So you can bring it to the shop floor. This is a sample of the uh, extension to the manufacturing area. The 12th philosophy says remove barriers to pride in workmanship and make people enjoy their work. There should be joy. So why work to come to work if it is not joyous? Uh, if the philosophy is properly incorporated in ISO 9000 2015 version, then there are no surprises. If there are no surprises in the processes, then people also would be like to work in the organization because, because they are not going stressed out. And therefore, uh, you would see that once the process, the, the ISO is in operation and uh, the low hanging fruits are all taken out and then you start building in the process capability, automatically the people will start enjoying the work because stress in the work would be coming down. Dr. Deming stressed on this as a 12th philosophy. 13th philosophy is to institute a vigorous program of education training that means acquiring new knowledge. Ask and plan now for an ongoing continuous education process to help everyone become the best that they possibly can be. If the right person is put in the right job and the process is become capable and stable and capable, then in order to take it to higher levels there is going to be a continuous education and that process is what Dr. Deming has said. We have now just started on to the 2015 version, maybe two to three years from now uh, we would see that education process would be getting in built in more and more. But knowledge management as we saw is already built in into the 2015 version so it will align itself with this philosophy. The last philosophy he talks is take action to accomplish the transformation. What it really means is improvement. Means what you really wanted to do, a mission, that is the constancy of purpose, that has to be accomplished. And that is in simple words if you say PDCA, plan, do, check, act. Whatever you act, you learn out of it, build it into the new planning. So try to rotate the PDCA concept at all levels as fast as possible. Really it means that you are slowly going up and up and up and up so that not only the defects are getting removed but you are reaching a higher level of process capabilities. Clause number 10 builds in this particular concept. Now it is left to us how much we want to use it to drive our transformation. So you will see that everyone has to think that his work is, is giving satisfaction to a customer or not. After all, it is the customer who is going to benefit at the end. We have to see that this improvement process is giving value to him. Uh, I'm closing this uh, 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 this uh, webinar with the conclusion that Deming had a great foresight. It's just become around 60 to 70 years, or 40, 50 years that it has come. But all our people who are behind the ISO 9000 2015 have definitely been by uh, influenced by Dr. Deming's philosophies and have built in into this uh, system. More is to be done in the implementation stage and time will only say how close we are with Dr. Philo his uh, Dr. Deming's philosophy or what more is to be done. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much Madhavan for this uh, great presentation. Uh, we want to inform you that PCB provides training and certification service for ISO 9001 2015 introduction, foundation, lead implementer, and lead auditor. 
training is designed to help you develop a single management system for quality management system by maximizing your benefits and fulfilling your customers' wants and needs also ensures that uh, you meet uh, a desired level of quality. The exam and the certification fees are included in the training price and also participants' certificate of CPDs will be issued to the participants. For more information, please visit our website pcb.com slash training. Okay, Madhavan, uh, we will go on uh, with the uh, first question. Yeah. Can you explain us shortly how can we use the dimmings 40 points to improve the quality management system? Uh, as I said, you know, if we can, uh, each of these clauses, each of these philosophies, we have already built in into your new uh, new system. So if we can find out the tools, the tools that Doc Deming said, simple tools, the seven QC tools, the seven new QC, QC tools, and uh, uh, brainstorming or uh, uh, theme selection matrix. There are several tools which he has been propagating and it has come out later also. If these tools uh, are taken and uh, for each of these uh, uh, clauses, we can identify those tools and start deploying them into those each of these uh, clauses, then we can be deploying Dr. Deming's philosophy in our ISO 9000 new version. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, great explanation. Uh, because of the time limited, uh, we will have to conclude this presentation. However, uh, if you have any other questions, you can send your question through email and we will answer uh, them. We will answer your question individually. Thank you again, Mahadevan, for this uh, clear and informative presentation. I want to thank all the attendees as well for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. To keep up with our webinars, please check PCB webinar schedule in our website pcb.com or our social media network. Next Tuesday, we are hosting a webinar on a very interesting topic, building practical risk application into your QMS. Thank you, Mahadevan, again, and goodbye. Thank you.